for those of you who were not at class last week, we started a new topic, a new theme, which is metropolitan movements, right? And so metropolitan, could somebody remind me what the term metropolitan means? Metropolitan. It's relating to the parent state of a colony. The parent state of a colony. So Kristen remained there. So give me some examples of metropolitan countries. Uh, Spain, Britain. Yes. yes. Um, what did I mean? Uh, France. France, very good. Yeah. Now, when we talk about, stay there, Kristen. When we talk about metropolitan movement, what are we talking about? Uh, I think the uh, yeah. Look, look at <laughs> one second, Kristen. Look at the the term metropolitan movement towards emancipation. Oh, so like their yes. mm -hmm. the journey towards freeing the enslaved, sir. Yes, the journey. So the, the journey is correct. The journey, where the journey going to begin? As in? The timeline, sir? Yeah. As in the first thing on the timeline? Not mm -hmm. the first thing on the timeline. All right, so let's not know. So one of the thing, ladies, is that what we're doing is that we're looking at metropolitan movement towards emancipation. So what are we doing? We're looking at all the movement, as Kristen correctly stated, that metropolitan actually mean a parent state, right? No, or what some people consider a very developed place. So we... England, France, Spain, they were considered the metropole. And so they are the parents state of the colonies in the Caribbean, right? So what we're doing is that we're looking at all of the, we're looking at all of the events that happened in the in Spain, France, Britain, that led to the emancipation of the enslaved people. How people in the metropole would have contributed to the emancipation of enslaved people in the Caribbean. So if we look at a map here, the Caribbean, all of this area, all of this area, the Caribbean, is considered to be where the colonies are. Over here in Europe is the metropole. So the metropole includes here, 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 and here. All up here is the metropole. And so what we're doing is that how people here, who we call abolitionists, would have led to the emancipation of the enslaved people here in the Caribbean. Now, what we also did last week was we look at some key terms. So we look at emancipation, which means the act of freeing the enslaved people, amelioration, improving the conditions of the enslaved people, apprenticeship, training the enslaved people to be free people, and abolitionists, those are the persons who were involved in the metropole, in England, in France, in Spain, the abolitionists who were involved in assisting the enslaved people in gaining their freedom. So for this theme, what we are trying to do is to find out what were the actions of the abolitionists in the metropole 
in helping the enslaved people to gain their freedom. Now we look at a timeline where we started to look at one. The first thing that the abolitionists did was to ensure that the slave trade was abolished. So they abolished the slave trade. Now, after they abolished the slave trade, then they are going to implement something that is called the registry bill. All right. And so the registry bill was to ensure that there was no illegal importation of new Africans into the colonies. It was to, end, to stop the illegal trade when it comes to Africans, because one of the things that is going to happen once the slave trade is abolished is that in British colonies in December 1807, no one could import Africans into the colony. So Britain is going to establish the registry bill that say, listen, you have to register all the enslaved people that you currently have. And if I come on your plantation and I see somebody who is not on your register, then I am going to charge you the plant. Then after the registry bill, we had the Barbados slave revolt because the people in the enslaved people in Barbados thought that the registry bill meant that slavery was abolished. Then after that, we have the amelioration proposal where people are going to say, instead of abolishing slavery, why not improve the conditions of the enslaved people? And so they are, what they're doing now is that they're going to put some proposal in to ameliorate the conditions of or improve the conditions of the enslaved people. However, Sir, go ahead. Sir, Ashley Curry is in the waiting room. I just accepted her. Thanks oh. much. The, so once, they improve the conditions of the enslaved. Well, they are going to put in these proposals to improve the conditions of the enslaved people. The enslaved people in Demarara, they are going to think that the amelioration proposal meant that their freedom was being withheld. So immediately after the amelioration proposal, then Jamaica strikes. Jamaica is going to have their revolt. And once their revolt came to an end, persons in Britain who said, listen, it's time for the for slavery to come to an end. Look, we said that we're going to improve the condition of the enslaved people. And the enslaved people are still revolting. Look at what happened in Jamaica. So Britain is going to come with a bill that is called the Emancipation Bill. This bill is not to prepare the, the, for the freedom of the enslaved Africans in the British Caribbean. Now, a part of this bill, so the bill has several different clauses, our provisions, are parts of the bill. So a clause, clause is a part of the bill. A bill is before you make it into law. So once it comes into operation, it is now a law. So Emancipation Bill, 1833 said, before we give the enslaved people freedom, before you give them freedom, you need to train them to be free people. So between 1834 and 1838, they went through a period of apprenticeship where they trained them to be freed people. And in 1838, they had full freedom in the British West Indies. Now, in the class last week, I mentioned that this timeline represents for the British colonies. 
the French and the Spanish colonies had their own timeline for freedom. So not all colonies were freed in 1838. Only the British colonies were freed in 1838. Now, another thing that we would have looked at was the abolition of the slave trade. So the first thing we look at, the abolition of the slave trade, was really one of the first acts in freeing the enslaved people. So what we did was that we looked at what led to the abolition of the slave trade. And so we spoke about a movement in Britain that was called the humanitarian movement. And so this movement said, listen, people should be treated free as human beings. Humanitarians, you're supposed to treat everybody as human beings, treat them properly right? Treat them as civilized. Some humanitarians went to Africa. And when they went to Africa, they said, but listen, these people told us that Africans were ignorant, they were dark, they were uncivilized, they were savage. No, we went to Africa and the people in Africa, they have good life. They are not savage. They are not ignorant. They have nice towns. They are civilized. And so these humanitarians are going to return to Britain and said, listen, we need to start to treat the Africans better. We need to free the Africans from slavery. And so that is how the humanitarian movement took on the persona of freeing the enslaved people. Now, one of the first group that we looked at was the Quakers. And so the Quakers was also called the Society of Friends. It was a religious denomination, all right? But between 1648 and 1755, Quakers were allowed to own enslaved Africans. So they could own slaves. But by 1755, sorry, 1755, the church changed its rule and said to their members that, listen, you are not allowed to own enslaved Africans. Because of this, ladies, what is going to happen is that the Quakers are going to establish churches in the Caribbean and in North America. Now, once they start to allow Africans to enslave Africans to attend their churches, this is what is going to happen. The persons who live in the colony said, oh, you and new denomination that, that just come about inviting the Africans to, to come to church and be members of your church. That's not how we do it in the colonies. That's not how we do it here. So they start to imprison the Quakers and they also start to oppress them. But that didn't deter the Quakers. So what they're going to do is that they are going to continue to allow Africans to attend their churches although they were fined or oppressed. Then after that, we looked at the abolition of the slave trade, how it came about. So one of the first thing that we looked at was Granville Sharp. Granville Sharp was a British, a white man who was very religious. He was involved in the church. And Granville Sharp, met an African man by the name of Jonathan Strong. He met him on the streets of London. And so he met Jonathan Strong and he said to Jonathan, he asked Jonathan, why, why are you on the road? Why are you on the street? And Jonathan Strong said to him, sir, my master evicted me. So in other words, his master ran him from the house. 
Then Jonathan, sorry, Sharp took Armstrong, brought him home, took care of him. And then two years after, Strong Master came and said, listen, I, it is my enslaved person. I have now sold him to a Jamaican planter. So Sharp took the matter to court to say, but I've been taking care of Jonathan Strong for two years. He threw him outside on the road, evicted him. And now he wants to take Strong to, to, to sell Strong to a Jamaican planter. So what Strong is going to do, he brought, sorry, Sharp brought the matter to court. And once he brought the matter to court, the judge refused to give a judgment. By the time the court matter should come back again, Strong would have gone to Jamaica and was re-enslaved in Jamaica. So that happened in 1765. Then by 1770, Sharp, Sharp again, Granville Sharp met another enslaved person, another African by the name of Thomas Lewis. He met this person, he said, on the street, and however, he brought the matter to court, and the court said, listen, the man has ownership over the enslaved person. No, that's not how it went. He brought the matter to court in 1770, but the master was not able to prove that he was the owner of Thomas Lewis. So what the court did was to free Thomas Lewis in 1770. By 1772, we have another case, James Somerset. James Somerset case is very similar to Jonathan Strong. James Somerset uh, met Sharp on the street. Again, James Somerset, an enslaved African, his master evicted him and sold him and then wanted to sell him into to slavery. However, Sharp said, listen, whatever happened to Jonathan will not happen to James Somerset. So he brought the matter to court. This is known as the Somerset case or the Manisfield judgment. Once he brought the matter to court now, ladies, what is going to happen is that he's going to say to him, to the, 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 the judge who was Lord Manisfield said, listen, after I review all the laws in Britain, I search every book, every law book, there is no law in Britain that say that British people could own Africans as slaves in Britain. There's no law in Britain that state that. So what Lord Manisfield did was that he approached Parliament and he said to Parliament, listen, no law is here that talk about that we can own slaves in our only slave laws are only applicable to the Caribbean, the British Caribbean. In fact, the British Caribbean, they were allowed to make their own laws. And slave laws were created in the Caribbean. There's no slave law in Britain. So what is going to happen is that parliament is going to refuse to pass a law that slavery was legal in England. And because parliament refused, Manisfield had to make a judgment because Sharp was on their case. And so what he did was that Manisfield made the judgment and said slavery was illegal in Britain because there is no law that was passed by the parliament to say that slavery is legal here. So we have been having enslaved people in Britain for a very long time, but there was no law to support that practice. 
All right. So after that, what is going to happen is that you're going to have the Quakers who are going to form a group that is called the Committee for the Abolition of the Slave Trade. Once they form this group, they are going to push parliament to abolish the slave trade. So in order for them to do that, what they are going to do is that they are going to investigate how horrific the slave trade was. And so they are going to publish books on the slave trade. They are going to get Olado Ol Equiano to publish a book to talk about his experience on the slave trade. They are going to present their materials to the British society and to the parliament. Now, the first thing they did was that they tried to get the parliament to pass the slave, to abolish the slave trade in 1790, but it was rejected. They did it again in 1792, it was again rejected. But by 1807, this society right here, the Committee for the Abolition of the Slave Trade, was able to convince Parliament with the support of the British public, some members of the British public, to abolish the slave trade in 1807. So the slave trade was abolished in 1807. Now, we know the slave trade was abolished in 1807. What was the next move for the abolitionists? Question. What was the next move? To abolish slavery in other um, countries, sir. Other countries? Um, um, all right. To, to, yes, the next move was to abolish slavery, but where? In the Caribbean, sir. In the Caribbean, in the British Caribbean. Very correct. So their next move was to, to abolish slavery in the British Caribbean. So if we look at our timeline, this is the abolition of the slave trade. And so we are going to look at all the things that happened from 1807 until 1833, where the bill was proposed to abolish the slave trade. Now, there were some very important things that was taking place here. The British Barbados Slave Revolt, the Marara Slave Revolt, Jamaica slave revolt. My question to you, how did the slave revolt impacted? How did the slave revolt impact the abolition of the of slavery? How? Sir. Go ahead. Sir, because basically like it forced their hand, you know, because if the slaves never revolt, they probably, it would take longer for them to abolish slavery because they realize that all these revolts are, what's what I'm looking for, simultaneously happening. They're like, okay, you know what? These people are fed up and they're gonna kill us all. So let's just do this. And That's their hand. The fact that you yes. said that um they would they would um, abolish it. Possibly if these people aren't revolting, we would still be in slavery. Right, because they said they don't have a problem with it. They never had a problem, right, and people right, today yeah. don't have an issue with it. Very good, so, excellent point. So, what do you think that the abolitionists, those white persons in Britain who were also called humanitarians, what do you believe they are going to use the argument for the slave revolt? How they are going to use the argument for the slave revolt as a reason to abolish the slave trade? Sorry, they slavery. That they endured the slave endured. Go ahead, Nelson. Um, they would use the conditions, the deplorable conditions that the slaves had to endure. Very good. Yes. So that is what they are going to use. Now, we know for sure 
that you are correct. The, these two historians, well, is, these three historians, Richard Hart, somebody read, read what Richard Hart stated. It, it was the enslaved who abolished slavery by taking actions through resistance, revolt, and continuous rebellion, Richard Hart. Read Beckles and Shepard. Blacks pursued freedom by all means possible. Hilary Beckles and Vereen Shepard. Very good. Thank you very much. So what Richard is saying is that it was the enslaved people who would have revolted or resisted against the system of slavery that brought the attention to the abolitionists in Britain at the time. And so Beckles and Shepard said Black pursued their freedom by all means possible. So we know for sure that the slave trade is going to have some rippling direct effects. Sorry, we, the slave revolts will have a direct effect on the, on the abolition of slavery. So these are some of the things that is going to happen. One, once the enslaved people revolt, are they revolt, right? Are they resisting the system? Whites became very fearful because they said, look at what happened in Barbados. Mm -hmm. After Barbados, we have Demarara. And then we thought, we, we put in some action to improve their conditions. And guess what? The conditions not even improve. The enslaved in Jamaica, they started a revolt. And trust me, Sam Sharp and his followers, they were not easy, right? And so they, were, they became very fearful that, listen, with the number of Blacks that were there in the colonies compared to the whites, then they could take over the colonies. They could seriously take it over. They were very fearful. Another effect is that once the, once the enslaved people started to revolt in the, in the colonies, the anti-slavery groups or societies in Europe are what we call the humanitarians or the abolitionists. They so said, these the, go ahead. Sir, these are the effects on the whites. No, these are the effects on general effects on the society. Okay. All right. So the group, the, the anti slavery groups who are also called the abolitionists or the humanitarians in Britain said, listen, that's correct. That is correct because. We need to, slavery need to come to an end because look at it, we passed the registration bill. What was the purpose of the registration bill? To ensure- Or the registry bill. To ensure- uh, Can go. Oh, so the registry bill was basically to ensure that there were no illegal, new, illegal new enslaves in the plantations. Very good. What was the purpose of the amelioration proposal? So the, the amelioration proposal was a proposal that was used to improve the country. Instead of giving them full freedom, they said that, okay, let's, how about we use a proposal to improve the conditions instead and see if that would work. And that was the amelioration proposal. Very good. So, so after the registry bill, and the amelioration proposal, we still see revolts taking place. Barbados had their revolt, the Marara had their revolt, Jamaica had their revolt. And so what is going to happen is that the, these societies are saying the conditions in the colonies are not good. The enslaved people not being treated properly. They are human beings and they should be free. And so, in addition to that, ladies, the planters are going to state that, listen, 
The enslaved people through their revolt would have lowered our profit because once a revolt takes place, enslaved people not going to go into the field to work. They are going to destroy the estates. They burn, burn down fields. They destroy the crops. They steal the tools. They destroy the animals. So listen, our profits are being lowered. So that is one of the effects on the slave trade. So the effects of the slave trade on the abolition. Because one thing is that they are no longer making a profit from slavery. Because once people revolt, it's going to destroy their profits. The next thing that is going, in the next thing that is going to happen, effects is that the myth, there was a myth that blacks were stupid and they were not able to organize themselves in a military manner. That was what the some whites thought. But what, what happened in Jamaica, Demerara, and Barbados, Burbies, and Haiti, by now, them realize that, listen, this don't make no sense. They are able to organize themselves in a military manner. They are able. So if we don't try or give them, the, 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 the Africans their freedom soon, they're going to kill all of us here in the, in the Caribbean and are send us back on a ship to to, to to Europe. So these were some of the effects. Another effect that happened was that the non-conformist missionaries, so these were like the Methodists, the Quakers, the non-conformists are those missionaries who are not aligned to the Anglican or the Roman Catholic Church. All right? Those missionaries, when the slave revolts happened, they would have gone and burned down their churches and killed and tried to kill these missionaries. How is it that you are a British? British society, you said that you are a Christian society and you are killing, you, are at, you try to kill the, the missionaries in the Caribbean. What effect that is going to have in the metropole? Once people in the metropole hear that, listen, you know that they tried to kill John Smith, they tried, they burned down the church in Barbados, William Shoeberry Church, and he had to run to England. Williams Nib and Thomas Burchell had to run from Jamaica. What effect that is going to have in Britain? Go ahead. Sir, disagreement. disagreement. Disagreement, yes. But what other, what effect you think it is? We know that it's going to have disagreement, but disagreement between who? Sir, the, the um, I think uh, the Europeans and Which the Europeans, the humanitarians, sir. The humanitarians and who? And the I don't know. All right. So what you there, sir? So all right. So let's say you're you're correct. So we know for sure that the humanitarians who were the abolish, abolitionists, most of them were religious people. Not all of them were religious people. Some of them were pastors. What they are saying in Britain at this time is that listen. We in Britain say that we are a Christian society. Slavery has corrupted your mind so much. This is what the abolitionists are saying now. Slavery has corrupted your mind so much, right? That you burned down a church, <laughs> Barbados. No, you need to change. You need, we need to get rid of this system because you are saying that the Africans are savage, but we in Britain and the, Af and the whites in the Caribbean are very savage to burn down the church. You reach the point where you burn down a church. 
They also went ahead and they missed the, the abolitionists also said that, look at John Smith. John Smith had to run from, from Demerara. Williams, Niban, Thomas Birchall had to run from Jamaica because they indicted the Africans into their churches. So we can't preach the gospel again, not even to the Africans. The missionaries are not allowed to spread the gospel and Jesus Christ said that we should preach the gospel. This is how wicked slavery has corrupted the minds of British citizens. And so the attack by the missionaries in the Caribbean is going to turn up the heat on the abolitionist movement. And it is going to say, listen, we have to get rid of slavery. It's a must that we get rid of slavery. Slavery cannot continue. All right? And so this is going to divide, the slavery voice is going to divide the British societies into two groups, pro-slavery, those who are for slavery, and anti-slavery, those who are against slavery. All right? So those were the effects mm -hmm. on the entire society. Now, there were some direct effects of the slavery goals on planters. They had financial loss. Some of the plantations never returned to their glory days. They had to close down their plantation. And also, the whites hardened their attitude towards the enslaved. They ensured that control was very strict. And they were very hostile to the metropole. Who in the metropole they would have been very hostile to? The non Repeat. Non the non-conformist the non missionaries. The non-conformist are... missionaries who were, were also the? Um, Anti-slavery group. The anti-slavery group are also, we call them the A word. A B. Abolitionists. The abolitionists, very good. So we know for sure that the slave revolts had direct effects on the planters. Next. Uh, sir. Yes. Go ahead. Could they also be like hostile towards the, at that time they had kings and queens, right? Could they also be um, hostile to them because they said that it was illegal for slavery? Could they be hostile to them too? No, they never hostile to the king and queen because guess what? The king and queens had slaves. Oh, they, they were part of the pro slavery groups. Oh, okay, yes. But the effects on the enslaved people is that many enslaved persons died as a result of the slave revolt. They had they were families were separated and their conditions were worsened. No, ladies, this is it. The two groups now are going to debate slavery. Pro-slavery groups and anti-slavery groups. And they are going to use these arguments. So there's debate that is taking place in the British society. Right? Big debate that is taking. Yes, Lawrence, go ahead. Go ahead, Lawrence. Sir, I was saying that um, also could um, one of the um, things that the that the abolitionists could use mm -hmm. against the people that were pro-slavery mm -hmm. um, was that because you know the amelioration it said that you know the um, slavery it would be the conditions of slavery would improve, but others that didn't, you know, happen. Very good. Excellent point. Excellent point. So you make a very excellent point, Lawrence, because what is going to happen is that they, they are going to use that argument to say, listen, you said that you were going to improve the condition of the enslaved, but you didn't, right? Very good. So 
two arguments. They are going to divide these arguments into humanitarian, economic, social, and religious. So these are the arguments, ladies. The humanitarian, the, the who were for slavery. This was the humanitarian argument, right? The humanitarian argument is, is going to say, listen, but I shouldn't use a humanitarian argument. I should say they are going to argue from a humanitarian perspective, right? So this is what they are saying. Those who were for slavery, they said, listen, slavery existed in Africa. The planters treat the enslaved people very good. They provide food for them. They provide clothes. They provide shelter. They provide medical care. We have been treating the enslaved people very good. We treat them better than how they were living in Africa. And we are teaching that we convert them to Christianity. We teach them the language, European language and European culture. So guess what? If you want to use a humanitarian argument to say that you are treat humanitarian argument to say that you believe in the better treatment of Africans. We have been doing that. Humanitarian argument. But those who were against slavery used another argument. He said, you said that you provide food, clothing, and shelter, and medical care for the enslaved people. Look at the treatment and the punishment of the enslaved people. Look how you separate their families. Look at the fact that they could not bring any evidence against you in the court. And you don't consider them as human beings. You consider them as your property. Right? So these are the arguments, humanitarian arguments against slavery. The next argument, the economic argument. So the first one, they argue from a humanitarian perspective. The next argument, they are going to argue from an economic perspective. Those who are for slavery said, listen, if we should free the enslaved people, we are going to lose our investment. Banks is going to collapse in Britain because most of us borrow money from the banks. Insurance company going to collapse. In fact, you people who are against slavery are ungrateful because slavery has provided jobs in Britain. Slavery has built British cities. Slavery has built the shipping industry in Britain. We are a great nation because of slavery. But the economic those persons who are against slavery said, listen, while some of those arguments are true, free labor was cheaper because than slave labor. Because if you have, if you free the enslaved people, then you could sell goods to them and they would be able to buy. We could have a free market. They said, if you look at the, the the revenues that British people earn from this from slavery. They don't make much revenue from slavery. We make more money from them from selling manufactured goods to India and the Caribbean. So why not focus our attention on manufacturing goods since we are in the age of the industrial revolution? Why not diversify the economy? Why stick with this? old system that is called slavery. Then some of the social arguments, those whites are saying, but if we should free the end slave, we are going to become a minority. Whether they free them or not, they are still a minority. And they are going to say, but the Africans are going to get political rights. And look, can you imagine if every single Barbados is like Haiti, Jamaica is like 80, St. Vincent like 80, Grenada like 80, Trinidad like 80. Can you imagine if we have all of these Haiti's in the Caribbean, what would happen to the world? They could come and take over the world. So these are this, those who are pro-slavery, they are going to argue this from a 
social perspective. But those who are the anti-slavery group said, listen, slavery is going to, if you continue slavery, look at the slavery goal. Most of you are already fearful and insecure because if you are fearful of slavery goal, slavery is just not healthy for the society. Then some is going to argue from a religious perspective, those who are for slavery said, listen, we convert them to Christianity and slavery is supported by the scripture. Ephesians 5, 7 said, servants be obedient to them that are your masters. The scripture mentioned that slavery is condoned. God approves slavery. But those who are religious, who, sorry, those who are against slavery are saying, you talk about you converting Christians to the enslaved people to Christianity and you, you don't allow the missionaries to, to preach to the enslaved. You would have locked up the Quakers for inviting the, for inviting the enslaved people to, to church. You don't believe in converting them. You are violating the principle of God that says love thy neighbors thyself. And you are also violating the principle of equality for all men. You really don't believe in equality. God is equal. God said, listen, these are the persons who are arguing from a religious perspective who are against slavery. Look how God freed the, the Israelites from slavery. In the same way God freed the Israelites from slavery, the Africans should be freed from slavery. So ladies, what is taking place is that we have religious argument for and against slavery, social argument for and against slavery, economic argument for and against slavery and humanitarian argument for and against slavery. Ladies, ensure that you study these arguments. Know them. Ensure that you can develop three points for an essay because it will come back again to haunt you. Any Sir, question? Go ahead. Sir, you know, like how in the Haitian house, one of the effects was that Haitian Haiti had to pay reparations to France. Yes. Sir, the, if the France go, French government, if they're so supportive of the Black Lives Matter movement and the freedom and stuff, why the why the president why the president or prime minister whatever why him don't stop the reparation? Why is he still collecting money? That is a very good question that we have to ask them. Very good. And sorry, you can go back on the economic slide, please. Lawrence, you are correct because Lawrence said that the strain on Britain, she said, some cases could you, all right, she said, sir, in some cases, could you say that it put a strain on Britain because to be sending troops and resources? She's correct. So when we look at an economic argument, that is also an economic argument that was used. And that is very correct that, listen, every time there's a slave revolt, we have to be sending troops and we have to be spending money. And so guess what? It makes no sense. Slavery is costing us more. And so that is correct. Any other point, ladies? No other point, all right, go on to your next class. We meet again. When we meet again, I believe we meet again, not tomorrow. Thursday. We meet again on Thursday. Tomorrow you have the, the work to do on Google Classroom. Yes, sir. Okay, bye, sir. Bye-bye. Yes, Lawrence. Mm. Sir, I was saying that um, it's ironic how um, in the big initial stages of slavery, um, mm -hmm. 
when you know the Spanish first started it, um, one of the um, reasons for the explore, exploration was to glorify God and know like the burned down churches and this encouraging um, Christians that are against slavery. Yes. You are correct. Okay, bye, sir. Bye, bye. That is, yeah, it is.